everybody. It's Pete Carmasino here at Chaykin Analytics. I'm the Chief Market Strategist, and this is the Halftime Show. Thanks for joining me. Each and every week, we kind of go over some things that are happening on our power gauge inside of our software system and kind of look at from a top-down approach. Sometimes we're looking at sectors. We're also looking at market levels as well. And then we just talk about some names that are kind of popping up on our really our automatic, automatically generated um, software that we have that we've kind of set uh, set up. We use 20 factors. There's an evergreen video out there. If you go back and look at some of the history of the shows, you can go see um, the one that kind of talks about the power gauge and how it works. And again, it's 20 factors, a multi-factor quantitative model. All right. But most of those are leaning toward fundamentals, right? We do have a technical uh, factor uh, category in there as well. We also have a technical overlay. So what are we doing? We're combining fundamentals and technicals and we're trying to make the best that we can, best decisions that we can based on what's going on a lot. A lot of it has to do with trend. A lot of it has to do with sentiment and obviously momentum. And all of those things are never going to go away in this market, no matter what kind of noise uh, that comes out. And boy, do we have just noise. I mean, that's really what's happening. We've been talking about this. Um, well, the markets have been talking about this you know, now for, for weeks it's, it all started with um, Silvergate, and then it kind of trickled into uh, Silicon Valley Bank and, um, and now uh, Signature Bank. Those two stocks, Silicon Valley and Signature, have been halted now uh, for over a week. People are trying to sort of assess the risk there. Um, some people are buying the assets. We're not exactly sure. It's not a very transparent situation, which leads you to sort of make some decisions maybe to avoid. Don't get involved in that situation. There's some speculation going on. Um, on the upside, on the downside as well. There's a lot of moving parts. You can get there, but you know I would very uh, tread very lightly there. Um, really, want to wouldn't want to take much risk at all. Um, and if you are, you know, potentially do it with a very low dollar amount um, to be involved. Right. Other than that, um, it's really just uh, it's just continued noise. And I can't believe I'm going to say this. You see, tech becoming sort of the safe haven in this sort of murky dark storm that we're seeing as far as the overlay of banking crisis headlines from every angle. doesn't matter what news outlet you go on. doesn't matter what social media outlet you go on. You're going to hear about it. So um, for us, we try to take the that noise and push it aside and kind of see what's happening. And that's what's happening. We're seeing the trends in communications and, and technology start to move. We obviously see defensives perking up those defensive names or, or sectors would be utilities, staples, healthcare, right? Those three are the three main defensive sectors. And uh, some of them are doing better than others. We'll look at a few today. I'm not going to go over every sector, but I'm definitely going to look at XLK and XLC. And then we'll go over some ideas that are popping up here on the, on the Chaken system. Let's go to the charts and see what we see. All right, as promised, we will look at uh, the XLV, which is the, one of the first defensive sectors here. Um, obviously, doing a little bit better in recent days. Um, sideways action on the actual sector of the fund itself. This is XLV up here, and this is the ratio, XLV to SPY. Down below, now you see a nice smooth curve higher, but recently had a downturn across to the downside, but it's really consolidating here and really looking at the XLV in general. It's looking you know, pretty... Uh, pretty sideways and that's kind of being uh, doing the work of being of playing defense. XLP, very similar chart. You saw the downtrend here because why, why everything was moving toward growth. And the assumption was let's move out of the defensives. And now you're kind of getting a rethink on this and you're seeing here's XLP, right? Consumer staples firming up and I'm really not the worst chart in the world. This is not the best, but 2023 started here. It's been down for the year, but really not getting, slaughtered so to speak right just a slow grind lower but again acting defensive in nature and here's xlu the utility sector uh, a very similar looking chart so you're seeing those kind of perk up but really let's talk about xlk and xlc xlk is down today but you're seeing a cross on the upside and obviously what we are seeing i think is important it's these higher lows forming and potentially uh, a higher high about to form if it can get above that 144 level or so, 145. Uh, but from the ratio standpoint, there is just no denying this. You can see it, it's right here. Um, moving higher and it's really outperforming S&P. XLC, it's been on the move for a little bit of, uh, of this year. It started um, right at the beginning of the year where 23 started right here. 
and uh, managed to push the moving averages uh, to a crossing area, but kind of stuttering here a little bit, stalling out a little bit. Um, but I am seeing that ratio change. And I got to say, that's really impressive under the circumstances, um, you know, in this market. So that was the quick overview from a sector standpoint. And that's why I wanted to kind of call that out to talk about, you know, what's happening, um, you know, in that, in that particular, in those particular sectors, why we're seeing these things perk up. And obviously why, why is we're seeing technology move higher is potentially lower rates and rates are coming down because bonds are being bought. When bond prices move higher, rates go down and it does the Fed, you know, the work of the Fed to kind of relieve the market slightly. But we've got a Fed meeting this week and we don't know really what the determination of that's going to be. Whether they hike or not, I don't think that's the case. I think it's going to be more about um, the question and answer this week. Uh, I think the hike is either priced in and um, it's more of a uh, sort of a, a saving face meeting. Uh, if anything, if they've been saying they're going to raise rates, they're going to raise rates. Now we have a banking crisis Maybe they just raise to a quarter. Um, some are in the camp. They may not raise at all. I don't think that's right. I think they are going to raise. So pretending, you know, pretending to not understand this is not really a good strategy. You've got to kind of look at what's happening in the rate markets and then obviously look at what's happening in the index. And that's why we're looking at the S&P on a weekly basis. Rally 5 has stalled, um, but it has not broken down to a new low, so to speak. The low is really right around that 37 and change, and that would be that December low. And here's the October low, which is all the way down to about 3,500, 3,491, I think exactly, but we'll use 3,500. Uh, round numbers are easy to work with. And so, again, we knew it was going to stall right around here. We weren't exactly sure when, how, or why, and that why came out later, but we kind of anticipated that. And here you can see bullish percent's been doing nothing but decreasing. And that's really the way I like to set these charts up. The first one here is the New York composite. The middle one is the NASDAQ composite. And the bottom is the S&P 500, which is what I'm looking at at the top here. But this is the bullish percent. It's kind of perking up a little today. We obviously see a market moving higher, but I think that's more uh, of tech um, related names than anything else. But, you know, there's some other names moving as well, not just tech. And then this is, a, you know, a pattern I've been kind of calling out Um on this, I don't know if this is going to play out or not, but I'll, I'll just revisit it because I think it's important to take a look at what's exactly playing out um, based on an old, old pattern called um, head and shoulders. This is what we were doing in the beginning of the year, kind of looking at what's happening. And these two circles are kind of representing this extra right shoulder, so to speak, that was trying to rally and start a new move off of the neckline and failed. And now we see it again. And potentially, maybe it's failing again. I don't know, but the target would be pretty low. It's ugly, but it's out there. And I thought I'd just point it out just to be safe to kind of look what's going on. Now, we talked about energy breaking down um, in the last couple of uh, episodes here, but you know, really didn't look at the chart. And I'm actually going to find a different chart here because I wrote something that I thought was kind of interesting from this <laughs> specific area, because the White House told us they were going to be buying oil at 72. So I built this buy zone, so to speak, and it seemed to have held up for quite some time. But this was the area that uh, the Biden administration said they were going to start replenishing the uh, strategic petroleum reserves. And um, it kind of cracked through there, currently trading at 67. So um, maybe they're delayed and they see a better price. I don't know if they're trying to be traders here. But that's kind of the thing that I was waiting for. But I'm also seeing this affect XLE and XLE is breaking down. So that's just quick sector overview. Let's look at some charts real quick. All right, we're back here on the Jakin system. And uh, I just wanted to look at SPY. I mean, SPY is rallying up a half a percent today. Um, had a relative strength change. Now, obviously, every other security on our system is uh, a relative strength versus the SPY, except for the SPY, of course. Uh, we use IWV. And that actually has just changed trend here um, just recently in the last couple of weeks since March 10th, actually about a, uh, 10 days or so. So that's new, a new relative strength on the upside here. Money flow kind of is decreasing a little bit, not really in, in lockstep, but it's in, a, it's in a weird zone, right? We're in that resistance zone. We just looked at that chart. So I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but you know we're, we're kind of still just treading sideways. And I think hate to say this, but I think every week it's, it's about the Fed and the rates. And now it's about a banking crisis that people are trying to sort of alleviate or um, mitigate 
if not eliminate. How about those three words? Um, so now you've got the Qs, again, a big proponent of the tech sector, moving higher, right? So that's interesting because it started uh, back around the uh, beginning of February, has tested a low here, a bit of a, the volatility bands in our long-term trend, and then started to move higher. So look, that's a sign that tech is moving. And if we look at XLK real quick, right, you can see the same, around the same time, we saw that at January 31st, our rating changed on the ETFs and it started to move higher. So we are seeing tech sort of outperform here and becoming an area uh, where money is gravitating toward. And the old saying comes true, money goes where it's treated best, right? So interesting setup. Now, um, look, I'm looking at something that's, that's I'm just going to call out here and some names that are having weak relative strength, you know, are popping up. Um, left and right. Now, this is a software name. You might imagine we'd see more banks here, but they're kind of, um, you know, already oversold. I might look at one bank before uh, we move on, uh, just so you can see where our our relative strength power gauge was against the bank for quite some time. So, um, but here's JMF Holding. I don't know this company. It's just a name that's on our, our automatically generated list. Software name, relative strength is negative. The stock's negative. There's really nothing here. It's down about 5.5% today. Um, I don't have the news. It doesn't look like earnings. So, again, it just looks like uh, you know, sort of a bad print getting getting worse. Same thing here. Another software name, Lightspeed. Just a downtrend. Follow this relative strength. It's going to keep you kind of out of the way, um, you know, some of these names. So, let's look at um, AMP, which is Ameriprise Capital Markets. Of course, in a banking situation, you start to see – uh, these capital market names roll over, but this is a fresh relative strength change. Uh, although it's up today about two and a half percent, it's a big stock. It's trading at around you know two hundred and eighty eight dollars, and obviously the market cap is almost thirty billion and change. So, um, but you can start to see when the breakdown occurs, you want to be aware of that and uh, try not to get yourself caught up in a downdraft sort of out of the blue. And you know these are some other names that start to look the same way. And what, what we're seeing in these names is obviously uh, some relative strength changes. And these are names that have good fundamentals, but don't forget, look, the market ignores good fundamentals sometimes and pushes those stocks lower, just as it ignores bad fundamentals and pushes those stocks higher. You've gotta be cognizant of the environment that you're trading in, right? So one of the names that we can look at is um, SBNY, which is Signature Bank. Now, it's not being rated currently, right? Because it's halted. It's been halted for a week. But do you see anything on this chart, again, from our perspective at Chaikin, that was really calling out that you should be involved in this name? I mean, I'm not going to say that we were ahead of this, but the fact is, is we weren't talking about it because it wasn't on our radar to be looking at. It was a negative relative strength change way back in March of 2022, an entire year of this, right? And that's the power of adding fundamentals to technicals and being aware of when things start to break down. I want to leave you on that note and say, how did you know? How could anybody have known? Well, this is just one bank. We can do another, a whole series on multiple banks, um, what Chaikin System was saying about them another time. Okay. I didn't want to end on a negative note there, but that's really what this is about. Um, we're looking at the just negative markets right now, even though we're seeing a push higher, uh, but, you know, the idea here is, is that there are certain sectors that are rolling over, financials being one of them, of course, and there are certain sectors that are moving higher, and that's technical. So now you're aware of it, use it, hopefully it's to your advantage. And again, just trying to add value here at week to week on the Halftime Show. That's all we have for today. We'll see you next week. Take care. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.